So we just gave Devontae Adams his five minutes of fame. Um, if you're listening on YouTube, be sure to go uh, check that out. Uh, it's probably under the caption, Devontae Adams is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't solidified the title yet, but uh, it's going to lean that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, question now, mark or no question mark? Let's let's know. take a take a couple minutes here and give Michael Thomas his due and uh, yeah, we, see, we, see we what wanna, y'all are thinking. We want to get into the rankings of where these guys fit into the overall dynasty wide receiver rankings, but we gotta we they need their five minutes or yeah. fifteen, however five turns into fifteen real easy here at Married to the Game. Sure, absolutely, there's, hit us up, there's three of us. Hit so. us up yeah. on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. Five minutes each. Yeah. So obviously these, we're talking about two guys who are playing with two outstanding quarterbacks on two They're franchises. Fire. One has a really good head coach, Mike McCarthy. People could take him or leave him. Sean Payton's probably one of the best schemers in the game. He's if a not, schemer. If not the best schemer in the game. Um, so I'll just come right out with it with Michael Thomas. My biggest drawback with him as a receiver and all that, I think he's a good player, but you got Breeze and you got Payton, and maybe when Breeze is done, maybe Payton's gone. I have no idea. But that's, I guess that's where I'm starting off with this guy, w- regardless of the breakdown of this guy. But that, 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 that's my biggest, uh, the only reason that I even step back a little bit on this guy because I'm, I, I really like what this guy brings to the table. Yeah, the only reason. And that's where we started coming into this the, in the preseason and the offseason. Every time we talked about Michael Thomas, when we ranked our wide receivers, when we did the mock it up before you fuck it up. It was like, what is life draft, AB going to be It like? was life AB after, after Breeze. Breeze. And I think the resurgence of the defense and the Saints and the, and and the, the run game. The, their, their run game. They're playing awesome football right now. Life's a whole lot easier for Breeze. Sure, they're on the track for the playoffs. Breeze life is a lot better than it was the last couple of years as far as just being week to week win-loss totals. You know, the Saints have really turned it around here and it's come out of their defense. And After an 0-2 start. Right, exactly. And so I feel like the after Breeze, maybe that pushes back a little bit. Maybe Breeze is more excited well, with what's going on because now. Because Breeze came out and said that he wants to come back to New Orleans. Like, he did that and before that in was the middle a, of this year. I don't know what's going to happen. Before, yeah. In the yeah. offseason, he said, I don't want to sign a contract sure. because I don't want to be... a lot of gongs in your room. Know. <laughs> yeah, we just That's the first smacking. time I gonged it. I usually am pretty good at the... <laughs> At the non A lot of hand talking tonight. Hands are flying. Anyway, sorry. But, so Breeze, you know, in the offseason, he said, he came out and said, I don't want to sign an extension because I want to see how things go. I don't want to be tied down. Sure. There's a possibility he pulls a Peyton Manning and goes somewhere else to another contending team because he didn't know how this, like, no one saw the Saints defense being this Yeah, I mean, bomb. you don't, you don't want to be twi- in the twilight of your career and, and just playing on a, Going on downhill. a, yeah, on right. a under 500 team. Ice year in his year. arm They're, every quarter because he's the, slinging it before so Before the turnaround, they were 0-2 even before the season started. It was, is this Sean Payton's last year? Is Drew Brees leaving after this year? Would he retire? So he's it, come out and said he wants to come back yep. to New Orleans. They haven't he's playing extended awesome. him. They, and New Orleans hasn't said, like, yeah, we want him back. In, in fact, they've thrown some shade at the fact that maybe he's getting older and, and falling off. Like, I feel like I've read something about yeah. the Saints organization throwing, like, a lip. Maybe they're just trying to squeeze a couple mil out of him. <laughs> when they do oh, finally no extend him, that's exactly but I, what I'm is. in the begin, you know, in the off season, I said like there's little to no chance he's back with the Saints after this. Yeah, and I didn't think I'm, so either. I'm on like the other track. Like I'm pretty, I'm almost 100 percent positive. Fixes everything. He's gonna be it back this year, does. and I would say that he probably is gonna be back for like two years. Well, let's let me let's just. I, I don't want to say. I think he's here for X amount of years because we played that game before and we've seen we're always wrong. It, who knows who knows what's going to happen with anybody and contracts and all that stuff. Teams sometimes teams make great moves and make bad moves. We think it's good moves when it happens and it's really bad. You know who knows what's going to happen. But if Drew Brees is there, Michael Thomas is a top five dynasty receiver, and it's hard to argue that. Yeah, no, I think so. But yeah, I mean, you could maybe even argue. Even higher than that in, in some regards. Yeah, if possibly, there was no but, life AB looming. Right. But, but like, there's no chance it's not looming because Breeze is 39 or whatever. Right. So it's not right. like he's good. If, if Drew Breeze was 35 and we could have this conversation of whether or not he's going to make it to 40, that's one thing. But he's already at 39. So there is AB and you can't take that away. But I think you said something great earlier was if you can just give me two more years of Breeze, I'll take Michael Thomas as early as I have to take him to get him on my team. Right. Yeah. If I could get two years then I'll sign up for whatever I got to sign up for. Um, looking like I was, I knew we were going to talk about Michael Thomas. So I started looking at some of the numbers and stuff. Like 
He's been crushing it this year. He's been charted with two drops out of 94 catchable balls, or 96 catchable balls he's caught in 94. All the player profiler has him charted with seven drops. They, they inflate the drops over there. Over there with the drops. Yeah, never, and never I, know what's going on What is actually a drop is very, very, you True, know, but I'm going to go with subjective. I'm going to go with pro subjective. football focus. I'll, I'll go with there. They've been, you know, they've been okay. the staple there. So two drops, that's that's amazing. Sure. Um, he's got this a fourth uh, lowest drop rate in the league. He's tied for fourth with most targets. Um, he's got the six most yards per route run. The, he's sixth in the receiving yards. He's the thirteenth highest non-quarterback scorer this year, and last year he was the twelfth. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people were like, kind of trying. I think people were shying away from Michael Thomas in the beginning of the year, not because of life AB, but just because well now he's going to get the number one corner, and he was only good because of Brandon Cooks, and like yeah. that definitely that was, a, the that case. was a conversation. Hadn't, oh, that was a big conversation. Hadn't seen that guy in a while. Yeah, he's yeah. out. Because yeah, Michael Thomas basically doing the exact same thing in an offense that is borderline completely different because they're just running sure. the crap out of the ball. And Drew Brees is like, Drew Brees' numbers are down. It's different, but it's the same. Schematic, like, you still got the same guy scheming. They, well, they've they always had a good run game. They just haven't had been ripping off these chunk plays. They also haven't had an offensive line that was... They've been one of the they've been the best running back screen team for five years, and now you got to... You Kamara. Know, uh, Kamara oh fits perfect yeah. into this mold of a screener, and then Ingram can catch it a lot better than he gets credit for, so... They sure. they can ba- they can bite you in a lot diff- lot more different ways than people maybe gave him credit for coming into the year. One last cool little stat here: him and Odell are the only two wide receivers in the history of the league to have ninety plus catches in their first two years. Solid stat. Solid stat. Solid stat. So I'm 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 all in on Michael Thomas. I was a little off in the off season just because of this life AB thing. I just didn't know. I wasn't concerned about him having to shoulder the number one load. He's basically doing the same exact thing. Like it. Anytime they throw a zone at him, like he is open. He knows exactly. Oh, this, like, and this this offense, it's just amazing. And maybe he has ninety four catchable balls because it's Drew Brees, Brees is so good, accurate of every, I, Right. We, we, it's not a Casey alluded to it. It's not a it's, it's it's not a coincidence that we're talking about two young wide receivers tonight that are awesome and then you know becoming studly in the league. And and one has Drew Brees and one has Aaron Rodgers. I don't think that's a coincidence. Right. And definitely and, not. You know, we got to see the the break of Aaron Rodgers with Devontae Adams, but Michael Thomas hasn't had a break from his Pro Bowl, you know, his Hall of Fame quarterback. But the things that we are seeing out of him, his ability to always get open in his own coverage, his ability to win that contested catch, his monstrous hands that are super, super, super strong with glue all over him. That translates without Breeze. Yeah. Just because, hands are huge. Just because the ball hits him in the chest every single time because Breeze is accurate is not his fault. Well, that ball but never it, hits him in the chest. But ever. Because that ball is right because, in because his hands. Ca- but you see right. what I'm saying. It's on target every freaking play. I mean, 90% of great receivers, Hall of Fame receivers, however you want to chalk it up. They had good quarterbacks. They had good borderline great quarterbacks and good borderline great schemes and maybe a combination of both. True, right? That's you know, that's a great point, and that that's really what it comes down to. And I'm not trying to take away from anything from these great receivers. Like, I mean, the work ethic and and, and being a really good receiver and all the things that fall into that category. You know, that, that's something that you have to figure out. But there's, you know, it can't get done without exactly. somebody to deliver you the ball. It can't get done without the scheme to get you of somebody enough, to get you open. Like, I mean, Randy Moss. You don't have to scheme Randy Moss, right? But like, I think you just do what you want. That's exactly but right. But then when he no. went to the Patriots, he had 23 touchdowns exactly. or something. Exactly. Broke the maybe, record. Maybe when he it finally, was. Was it that many? Yeah. It was Army ridiculous. 21. Yeah. Broke the record when he went to with Tommy in his first year. What you just said was absolutely right. The reason the wide receivers are divas is because there's they rely on a quarterback. They cannot get the ball without the quarterback throwing it to them. It has to be at the offensive line. They rely on everything. They are the they they control the least about of the play on on the field. The, the the line has to protect the quarterback enough for him to get it out on time. Right. The quarterback has to get it out on time. Has to be you know has to be enough threat in the run game to let the receiver not to be doubled and tripled every right. every play. You know what I mean? So I, I, I what you're saying there is is spot on. I loved it. So and and to to Jason's point of of saying how you know Brandon Cooks isn't there anymore and now he's going to get the number one. I mean, which is which is true and there has been zero uh, decline and and what has been going on with Michael Thomas but I will say like I, I went and watched a ton of Devonte Adams games and and watched a lot of routes and every incomplete and complete and I did the same thing with Michael Thomas the difference between these two guys to me is when I watch it is just like Michael Thomas is just is he's just wide open 
ninety yeah. percent of the time, and it doesn't even make which it doesn't even make sense because who else is on the Saints? Like yeah. on the on the Packers, at least it makes somewhat sense that sometimes Devontae Adams is just wide open regardless of the route he ran. Right. Like with the Saints, there is nobody else there. Like I mean, the run game, the the run game, and you have Kamara and Ingram, um, but. What what you see a lot is is is, is just the scheme and the way and the yeah. way it's it's thought up and the way they run it and the way they run other plays is set up plays and right. you just you got Kamara in the backfield and Michael Thomas in the slot all of a sudden Kamara and Thomas is matched up with a corner and he's got you know a little bit of a linebacker help kind of deal and then all of a sudden Kamara comes out and he's lined up in motion and he's lined up out wide well now that that corner now shifts over to Kamara. And Michael Thomas is left with a linebacker. Like that's not fair. Yeah. And and to you, me and Big Co talked about this at some point. And it's not fair if Kamara's got the linebacker on it. You're going to throw it to him. Right. And it's just it's, it's a it's, lose lose for right. the, for the it's, defense. It's scheme it and and go to where the good matchup is. Yeah. Nine times out of ten. And sometimes it's just well I'm going to just throw it to my guy Michael Thomas who's got hands like glue, a big frame, big hands, and you know I'm my guy's going to be better than yours and Breeze's ball is going to be in where it needs to be. Sometimes yep. it on is time. That, but they also they make you they stretch the field out that make you defend every square inch they they might screen screen pass to the running back on the right side they might ball fake screen pass to the running back on the left side they're all over the place they you know so that that stretches the defense out and then you have breeze who's highly accurate and he has he always finds the open receiver so when you have open receivers getting balls then that has to restrict the defense's ability to lean towards the number one just because, I mean, sometimes you see an A.J. Boyo or a Jalen Ramsey just be like, I'm going to follow this guy no matter what. I'm going to try to shut him down. And, but, or what the Saints are doing with, with their rookie and, and, and Latimer. And, uh, sure. Their other corner. They're, that's why their defense is so good. Right, right. Exactly. E- exactly. Yeah. But it's just so much harder to defend that when you have the Hall of Fame quarterback that can pick you apart in other ways. So now the defense has to pay attention to other people. And big, awesome Michael Thomas comes and slings. He's we talked about him one time before about his bloodline and how it it came out. And he's you know, Keyshawn Johnson's nephew, and he went to Ohio State. He was a top recruit. The Ohio State's offense was a little rickety there for a while. They did a lot of running with the quarterbacks and handed it off to Zeke every time. But Michael Thomas, anytime he got the ball, he was scoring touchdowns and throwing people down. And 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 honestly, for me, I I I didn't take enough account of that. And of course, I do devalue rookie wide receivers because I want the the quick value jump of a rookie running back when they hit uh you know but and i you know i distinctly remember last year coming in and in previous year in his rookie year just decrediting the things he had done in college and then he hit the pros and and you know well there's no decrediting him now you can't you just absolutely can't he's put too much on tape he's too damn good we mentioned the big body like he just wins at every level he can beat you down the field in the air over the middle versus zone he does work after the catch i was just about to say that the after the catch stuff is is i think he's like des bryant a little bit yeah he's like des after he called i love the after the catch stuff it's awesome the hands are great and then yeah scarlet's like yeah yeah that's the resident dog scarlet one last thing I wanted to add about Michael Thomas is he's a great interview. Yeah. Like, he just seems to be like a really level-headed, humble, respectful guy. He's like, people ask him questions, and he's, yes, sir, no, yes, ma'am. He was he, The lady was trying to ask him a question, and some guy tried to come in over the top of her, and he was like, finish your question, lady. Ma'am. You know, ma'am. <laughs> and, uh, like, they asked him at the end of the game, like, did he feel like he it was a time for him that he needed to take over to win this game? And he was like... In the most non-selfish way, yes. Like I, I don't yeah. want to make it about me, but I did feel that's the like need the family need... feud. Good answer. Right. Good yeah. answer. Oh, right. Clapping and the head shaking. <laughs> right. Yeah. So he's he's like super. He can see the genuine smile on his face because he had a good game, and he he just he just and he's a little soft spoken. It's almost like it's almost too soft spoken, but like his game is not soft spoken. No. So great interview. That's what you want. Stock yeah. up. Mike Andre Evans, Johnson was like, soft spoken. Mm-hmm. And he would mash you with that stiff. Oh arm. yeah, and and you know, again the thing, the reason that we're talking about Michael Thomas and the reason that we were talking about Devontae Adams is because they've just put up you know wide receiver one numbers back to back. I mean Devontae Adams had a, a two year window there where, like we said, the value fell off the cliff. But this is the first two years of you know Michael Thomas's career yep. ever. And, you know, there may be a life at there is going to be a life after Breeze and it may be one year, maybe two years. Um, but for, for right now, while he's around and while Breeze is doing his thing, um, th- th- this guy's just a force to be reckoned with. And there's there's not much you can do to stop him. There's just there's just like the Packers. There's all sorts of weapons all over the place. And 
Well, the good thing here is, is Michael Thomas and the Saints, like Michael Thomas was, he could have gotten these same exact numbers and they could be three and 13. Sure. Right? You know what I mean? Sure. So the good thing is, is the winning and it could keep the coach there. It could keep the quarterback there. And for Michael Thomas's dynasty value, stamp it. Mm-hmm. 